Hey everybody, Corridon here with a hero guide and quick look at Lia the Paladin. This isn't going to be as in-depth as my Bree guide or some of the other character guides I've had. I'm going to take my face out of there so I'm not blocking the Lia. It's not going to be as in detailed as the other characters since this character just came out. And she's also very complex as is the other one as they are dual class and there's a lot you can do with them. My builds aren't going to be that great because there's just so much to do with them that it's hard to do. I've mostly had experience with them in obelisk mode. Haven't really done that on much adventure, but there's just so many ways you can go with these characters that you're not going to be able to cover it all in a video. And even going into specific builds is going to be tough. Anyways, Lyle, what is she? She is a paladin. She has healer cards and uh, warrior cards, which means she has intercept, she has prayer protection, she has this new holy slash card, she has holy nova. And then her other starting card, or her unique starting card, is Lay on Pause, where it heals damage based on targets missing health and applies to the new buff, which is Zeal. And she works with Zeal a lot as a paladin, where every charge you get of Zeal, it doesn't stack, is 7% resistances, healing sanctified plus 20%, and damage done plus 1% per burn charge, and remove all charges at the end of your turn. So if she's applying this on herself, it is going to go away. Unless there's a certain circumstance, which we'll see later. Anyways, let's go ahead and sh talk about her speed a little bit. It's pretty, I think it's the lowest of the warriors. Completely, maybe, actually, what's Heiner at? Yeah, it's almost as low as Heiner. She's pretty darn slow. Her physical resist aren't great. Her holy resist is pretty good, though. And she also comes with holy resist armor. But anyways, let's get on to her traits and level up choices. So her innate trait is Overflow, where at full health, if she hits something for Sanctify to trigger Sanctify, which is attacker heals 1 HP per charge when target is hit by an enemy, remove 1 charge when this happens. So if she hits an enemy with 5 Sanctify and she's at full health, she's going to heal her sides for 2 each. So one thing to note about that innate is it doesn't like carry over, so it's not going to wrap over and heal Magnus. Her best slots probably are in 2 and 3, acting as a pseudo healer or a pseudo DPS. I probably want to have her frontlining because of her low resistances, her low speed, and that fact that she is uh, best off triggering her trait in the middle there. Let's get to her level 2s, which are Purification, which is more based on uh, picking defense cards like Intercept and Prayer Protection. All of your shield and block charges are plus 5 for the duration of this ability. And you are going to be dispelling 2 uh, of anything on her. The first 2 debuffs on Laia. You're going to be drawing 1 card and applying 3 Sanctify to a random monster, which is all pretty good effects. It's I don't think it's as good as something like uh, Defensive Strategy from Bree, but it still gets the job done and it's pretty unique. Especially the self-dispel, that actually could help out a lot if she's frontlining her. If she's even in the back row, would be great because she'd be able to dispel herself and cast like heals if she gets silenced. Her other enchantment is very unique in Excalibur because this is, I think, the first enchantment we get that doesn't ever fade away. Unless you put like put up over three enchantments on her, then it'll be pushed off. Similar how to like you can push off enchantments off of enemies or yourself. Uh, so do be careful if you're fighting something like Twins or Hydra that put an enchantment, a uh, debuff enchantment on you, or even Yulmer, that you don't want this to be your last enchantment as it's going to be pushed off. Anyways, it transforms all your damage to holy for the rest of the combat. Your holy damage goes up, and whenever you play an attack, you're going to apply burn and sanctify to random monsters, and you're also going to be suffering burn, which does seem pretty bad, but as you remember with... Uh, Zeal, you are going to be doing crisp damage for each burn charge you have. So her level 3s are pretty interesting. These are the first heroes where you get actually 4 cards discounted, but you have to play a pretty specific deck to get the most use out of this, because whenever you play a warrior card, reduce the highest cost healer card in your hand by 1 until discarded. Whenever you play a healer card, reduce the highest cost warrior card in your hand by 1. These work really well with cards like Inner Fire, Intercept, Especially stuff like Blood Rage or Fanaticism that give you free energy because you're discounting and getting that energy. Oh, it feels so good to get four uses out of this every time. And then her other ability at level three is super, super interesting. It's Zeal, or Zealotry, which works on Zeal. Zeal charges plus two, which is insane. That's plus 14% resistances, plus 40% healing received from Sanctify. 
and a lot of extra damage, but it doesn't go up. Anyways. What this also does is her, she gets a little bit more damage for burn charge on when she's burning and has zeal on her. But the big thing is she only loses two charges of zeal at the end of this turn instead of all charges. So if you can do something like, say, Perseverance has this overcharge. So if you spend 10, like your full energy on this, 10, you get 10 zeal. That means you are going to be at plus 70% resistances. The next turn, you're going to lose 14% resistances. You're still at plus 54% to all resistances. That's insane. So she can be a super tank with this one. She can be super DPS with this one because of the damage plus from burn. I haven't really tried her self burn much because you can't really get that in obelisk mode, but I have seen some crazy things posted about it. Uh, it can be pretty good to use Cornelius with her to just like, or any of the mages to light her on fire. But you do have to be careful with going self burn because one wet will just go and kill your build. And then her level 4 choices are between Heavenly Protection, where it's the next defense card you use, all heroes will gain shield, zeal, and bless for each energy. That's two zeal for each energy. Wow. I don't think that stacks though, so you have to get Zealotry. I'm not sure if this is, works as the same as Overcharge or not, but you'll be getting a lot of bless. So, and it's either 4 or 2 zeal, but if it actually works the way I think it it might with overcharge if you're getting four six eight zeal that is insane and gonna keep you alive for the next turn it also puts a consecration into your hand which is a very good dual damage apply a lot of sanctify in all monsters and that stuff and i think this gives you a way better con yeah you go from three three two two to uh four four three three so definitely looking to ranking her up and that's something you can do in this new patch. Once you hit uh, rank 10, you can spend supplies to rank up heroes. But anyways, let's go over to Heavenly Justice. This, uh, yeah, just making sure I didn't miss anything on that. Heavenly Justice is, is the next attack. For every energy you use, deal 4 damage, apply burn, sanctify, and vulnerable to all monsters. If you play something with like 6 energy, that is a lot of vulnerable on all enemies, which is crazy. And then it gives you this amazing card, which is Purge of the Wicked. At base, it is X equals your zeal times 6. So if you have 3 zeal, you're going to be doing 24, 24, 24 bleed, and 24 burn. No, no, wait, my math is... 18, 18, 18. I'm dumb. But if you have 4 zeal, I... Sorry, it's late. I am trying to get this... Done right below. It's so exciting, all these new heroes and everything. But uh, yeah, this one is times seven. So if you have four, it's 28, 28, 28, 28. It's insane. And it purges two on everything. So it can even purge invulnerable off enemies. It is a crazy, crazy card. And then her level fives. I do think they're a bit disappointing, but she's got such strong level fours. They're really good. Beacon of Light is Sanctify plus 1, and the bonus of Overflow is increased to 70%, and you don't have to be full health, so you can be at 50% and triggering this and healing your allies, and it's kind of crazy, like, you're not going to die unless your team pretty much gets one shot, or you don't have a way to apply Sanctify. Otherwise, we have Righteous Flame, where it's Burn plus 1, and Burn on this heal hero heals 0.3 HP per charge instead of suffering damage, and Zeal on this hero increases damage done by 7% per charge, that is insane as well. One thing to note with this is it's not going to make you immune to fire damage because you may be at like 200 burn, but that 200 burn is going to be leaving you at negative 95% fire resistances. And that's going to mean a Disintegrate or another big fire card like Meteorite is just going to be hitting you for 200, 300. It's going to be bad. So do keep that in mind. Uh, starting deck is pretty nice. You get Holy Slashes, Intercepts, two AoE cards in Holy Nova. Pair of protections, inner fire, which are kind of hard to use, but are still pretty good. Lay on pause is, I think, an amazing card. I talked about that earlier. And then we also have perseverance, which is, can be upgraded to overcharge into crazy zeal amounts. Anyways, perks. I only have four here, and these are going to change a lot since there's so many things you can do with this character. I'm going to be posting these perks down below, but these would go with the deck side I build. For the first 20, I would just 
go energy like you do everybody else. Physical, I just go block. And then I also actually don't want to put that in the heal. I want to put that in the bless. Like that, yeah. So definitely fixing that and before I put it in production. And then uh, holy plus one, sanctify. And then for the second perk loadout, I have balanced. Where it's a little bit of everything. Some blocks, some fortify. You don't really need fortify if you have like Heiner on the team tanking, but this is just a general all purpose thing. Flying powerful. You definitely want the sanctify charges up. Uh, burn charges would actually be probably better in this one, so I'm actually going to uh, swap some things around probably before I post it. Uh, anything to look out for besides sanctify charges? Not really. There's like no end game perks that I'd pick on her yet. But for damage, we are going to uh, pick some endgame perks where I actually have uh, stealth just in case she picks up like a Night Veil or anything or has somebody stealthing her. Uh, this powerful perk I think is really good since this perk was changed to maximize itself at 70% up damage. And you lose all charges at the end of the turn while this, when you max it out, you're at 60% damage. And charges are, you're only losing 5% damage at the end of the turn. So I think that powerful perk's good. This end line I picked where you uh, lose less fire resistance per burn charge you have on you and your speed is going way up. Uh, end line sanctify of course, bless, definitely pick up the damage point 1.5 and she's going to be doing a lot of damage for you. And then I just have this weird perk set up too for uh, double wet since I think it's really interesting that uh, the dual class heal healers have access to double the rain as you'll see here in a bit when I go through the decks. So, just various perks. There's uh, there's just so much these characters. I wish I could give a better guide, but that's gonna be coming later if I do in depth on these characters. But yeah, go ahead and exit that out. Go ahead and uh, start a game to look at the decks I've made. Or act one. So we're going to go in here and go to the Magic Forge, go to Laia, and here is cheap support. It's still a little bit expensive, but I swapped out intercepts for repair armor I put in Detoxifies just because those are so good in Act 1. You can probably skip those. Probably don't need to dispel magic, but this is more of a support thing. I have Guard in here, but instead of Guard, I would actually put it in this. Uh, I'm going to craft it and then swap it up just to fix this deck. Because there are new cards, and these new cards are fun as heck. So yeah, this is what I'd use over guard. So let me get that out there. Uh, get that out of the guard. So we are going to delete cheap support and save it again. I know I'm doing a little bit of editing in the middle of this, but all right. So this is where I'm actually going to skip to for the next part. Cheap support here we have for about a thousand. It's going to give you your AoE, Sanctify, your AoE, Shield stuff. And we have this new card, Shield Stance, here, where you can pull out one of the three cards. And usually Guard is going to be your choice, but you also have the choice between Shield Throw and Shield Charge if you need a frontline slow, or you need to just throw something at a monster to get it dead before it gets a turn. Then we have a wet support tank where if I was going for a tanking build up front and I also wanted to supply wet, I'd be using this new blood rain card with these healing rains and a wet build and then using stuff like Anthem of Hope and Battle Shout to get everybody reinforced, encouraged, and then AoE blocked up. Then we have bumping and tanking which has divine power, entrench, perseverance, holy novas, Anthem of Hope. And I'll probably be making a 60 seconds dex video on these as well later. So if you just want to look them up or snip them later. And also, <laughs> it's kind of crazy because I don't know how many people are going to be playing sandbox mode, but with sandbox mode, you can go crazy and craft as many cards as you want, as rare as you want. Just make the craziest of decks. So, yeah. These are all going to be pretty expensive too, but these are mostly just to sh showcase her. F Sanctify AoE, she's going to be hitting herself a little bit, but she's going to be healing that off with all the extra stuff she's doing with playing AoE, Sanctify with Dawnlight, Holy Nova, Holy Storms, Divine Insight, 
Only slash is just there for the zeal proc, and then we have expected prophecies to get through the deck. Then we have self burn, which is four inner fires, some burning blood with blood rage, and then holy fire and holy storm to do stuff. And then I have prescription there just in case. I want to. Oh, prescription there just to get hopefully healing spells with uh, zeal on them attached. And then we have a defensive bless and heal build where you're just going to be hopefully blessing your teammates. Applying AoE, Sanctify, and uh, giving them buffs. And also I have Protect from Evil here. Some exp more expensive uh, defense spells. Which can be really cool if you get something like Last Stand. Because you get access to this. Which lets you pick up both healer defense cards and warrior defense cards out of your deck. You can see how crazy that would be. And my brain is already exploding because you can be getting Sanctuary. Which is why I put Bless in the perks. Oh, so much. And those are some of the cards to look out for. Just any of the big warrior defensive cards. Any of the big... The one... Offensive card I would be looking out for would be Divine Strike. Or the, that... Yep. Yeah. This is the card I'd be looking out for... As a... Uh, as a DPS is that big one. And then for defensive cards, I'd be looking out for Citadel, Last Stand, Sanctuary, what the heck did I just, eh, accidentally opened something I didn't know I had access to. But you can be pulling out these like big defensive cards. I love Perseverance, that's such a big combo when used with uh, the Divine Strike. Which is another good card, which I haven't shown. Because I don't think I have it to craft, but I think it's... Oh no, it's epic. This card is amazing on her, because you can pull out Perseverance and... Well, Yellow Perseverance from the yellow one. And it's cost reduced by two, so you can go bigger with it. Oh, you're going to be seeing that so much for me in Obelisk Challenge. Oh, now Divine Power has also got uh, overcharged to it, which is <laughs> crazy. Alright, equipment. Let's look for equipment. Equipment, I think anything with Sanctify charges, anything with Bless charges, you'll get this awesome Durandal spell, Holy Hamler, anything where you can play on heal is great too. Like the Holy Grail, Winged Wand is great on her. Uh, Paladin Gauntlet's not so much, but Relover, that's an interesting card from Tula that's new. Main thing I liked with her was... uh. This, where's that? Where's the golden bell? Right here, golden bell. It, you can get this proccing a ton with uh, her level four. But yeah, just generally good fighter cards, good healer cards are both awesome for her. Uh, there's two new sanctify rings, Justica ring and Pentius ring. I guess it's one new Justica ring, but yeah, every. Sanctify charge you apply one bleed is great. Uh, yeah, going a little quick. I hope it's not too quick, but excited for these heroes. I'll g hopefully get a more detailed thing. Look at them later once I actually know how to play her because I don't want to give you guys. Oh, this is the best information. Keep using it. But anyways, quick look out. Anyways, let's go back and show you what her drafts look like. And what's neat about this is I can take everybody away and then press this new random button. Boom, 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 boom. All right. So big thing for her is she has access to the Justicar. That is amazing. That's going to be Divine Insight. Paladin, I think, is pretty good. You'll want to go into that. And then you can either choose between like seeing anything good from the Guardian or Defender packs or random pack. We'll just reroll everything there. And we'll just go with Guardian. And then we get a Divine Insight or Divine Power. Both are really good for Obelisk. And then, oh, we get an extra row of stuff, which is kind of crazy. Usually with her, I'm going for HP, Sanctify, Speed, and then considering any of these other choices are all pretty good, depending on what you draft. Holy Damage is also really good just because of your level 2. That converts everything to Holy Damage. But yeah. Go ahead and hit her draft one more time just to see what it's like. 
See if we get anything good. Oh, uh, we get a really nice Holy Nova. We get a Holy Nova here, so we can be doing... And a Holy Nova here. Why not take three Holy Novas? And then here, I would be probably taking the Divine Power and using it to buff others, but we have a ton of AoE Sanctify, which is hopefully going to keep people up. But we normally have her in slot two or three for this as well. But yep, that is my Laia quick guide. Hope you enjoy it. Hope you enjoy the new hero. Hope it's a good jumping off point because there is so much to experiment with these new characters. You guys are going to have a blast. I'm going to have a blast. And remember to take care of yourselves, brush your teeth, do all the good things, and have a good night, evening, lunch, dinner, dinner, breakfast, brunch. Goodbye. And adios. See you for the Navalia go over. Bye.